Hey guys, Mr. Shadow here. Uh, now, I don't have any gameplay footage for you guys today, but what I do have is a pretty cool trick that was passed on to me by the Ping Pong Waves 11 VR devs when we were talking the other day. And this is going to allow you to get into your Unity engine based games and get at their graphics and uh, resolution settings, even if the devs have not explicitly given you any graphic options to play with in the game. Now, this is not going to work for any of your Unreal games, unfortunately, but if you know of a similar hack or workaround or backdoor for Unreal games, please go ahead and leave that in the comments down below, and I'll try and do a video on that on uh, another day. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into Steam. And I think what I want to do is go ahead and do this the long way for any of you out there that have maybe a game you've downloaded from some demo site or you know, a, a beta you've gotten or your buddy's making the next Skyrim VR and you're testing that out. Um, so basically what you're going to want to do is navigate to the EXE. Uh, the easiest way for me to do that is pick a game in here, go to local files, browse local files, and it's going to take me right to the EXE for ping pong waves. Uh, and the it, it's really simple. All you're going to do is highlight the EXE, hold down shift, and then double click. And that is going to pull up this little Unity config window. And the default settings are probably going to be some atrocious atrocious aspect ratio of like 800 by 600 uh, resolution uh, and then fastest graphics quality. And you're going to have black bars over here if you try and record at this um, by with a 16 by 9 uh, aspect ratio. And if you're just like trying to show off VR to somebody that's not wearing the HMD, they're going to have this tiny itty bitty little screen in the corner here uh, to see what you're seeing and it's just not a good experience all around there's no reason this should be this low um, but let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, and illustrate the difference in in gameplay settings and just the the size of the screen in general um, so now like like i said when trying to record this the first time i had these huge black bars on either side because i record in 1080 uh 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution but even worse is when you come over here and i'm just gonna pick up the headset really quick i'm not gonna put it on so this might be a little awkward uh, and you walk over to the table and you'll see that there is no there's no shadow for this paddle there, there's nothing there and you can kind of see it's a little jaggy along the edges there and along the edge of the 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 screen even the ball kind of has uh some jaggies going on there Let's go ahead and fix that. So we'll set that back down and we'll come back over here. Let's go ahead and close this guy out and we'll do the same thing. We'll click on this, hold down shift, double click on it to bring up this Unity config window. And we'll change this to a much more reasonable 1920 by 1080. And then we'll change this graphics quality to fantastic because we have a fantastic computer and we can play it on fantastic graphics. And that is going to pop up this nice large window over here, which is a much better viewing experience for anyone that is watching you play on your computer, as well as uh, for streamers and YouTubers to record and stream video. Um, you're not going to have any black bars. It's going to fit perfectly and just look really nice. Uh, but let's go ahead and do that same thing where we pick up the headset and take a look at this all right and now we see we actually do have a shadow so we've got a shadow for our paddle the ball looks smoother and the edges here don't look nearly as jaggy the uh, fence looks much more smooth and it just all around looks and feels better it's pretty subtle but you do notice it all right so now that we've illustrated that, let's jump out of here and show you the way that you would do this inside of Steam. And it's pretty much the same exact thing, but you're going to come over here to the Play in VR, hold down Shift, and then click Play in VR. And you're going to continue holding down Shift until the uh, config window pops up. If VR is, uh, Steam VR is not already running, it will take about 5 to 10 seconds for Steam VR to boot up, 
and then the game will load. And if you're not holding shift after Steam VR boots up and before the game loads, it'll just go directly into the game. So just hold down shift the, the whole time and you'll be safe and it'll pop up into this. One thing to note with this is that the settings that we just changed from uh, 800 by 600 and fastest, they, they were retained. So this is only a one-time setup. Um, so if we go in here and play, we'll see that we still have the big window. Everything that we did was saved. So we go ahead and exit out of that. We can also go into the store page and please let it work this time because Steam has been giving me all kinds of issues today. Uh, if I hold down shift and click play now and continue holding it until the config window pops up, we will see that I still get the config window. And I can exit out of that and go back to my library. And just so you guys know that this is not something exclusive to Ping Pong Waves VR, let's go ahead and take a look at another game I know, VR, VR. And we will hold down shift and click play in VR. Ah. So this is what was happening earlier. And I think that the reason for this is because I did this trick with um, Ping Pong Waves VR, and I immediately hit can uh, quit instead of play. Uh, and I think that that confuses Steam, or Steam VR, I'm not sure which one, into thinking the game is running and the game is not actually running. I haven't really confirmed that, but that is a consideration to take into account when you're doing this, um, is that if you do open that config window, you're going to want to hit play and you're going to want to close out of the game. Uh, it might be safer to go ahead and go properties, local files, browse local files, and just do it from the EXE and take Steam completely out of the picture. I think that is probably what I will do just with the difficulties that I've had tonight trying to record this. But let's try this one more time with VR. Holding down shift, clicking on play in VR, and now that we've actually opened up that game and closed it out correctly, it opens up just fine. And we can see that I've already been in here and changed these. Uh, I think that it starts something like um, 1200 by 800 or 1280 by 760. It starts off at some weird, um, not uh, appropriate. It's, it's not 1280 by 720. That one would make sense. Uh, it's some 1280 by something that, that doesn't, like 1280 by 800, I think. Um, so you can come in here and fix that and give it a 1920 by 1080. Uh, and then set it to ultra high, or maybe ultra high is too much for your rig and you want to set it lower. Uh, but this just gives you those options that you won't necessarily have from a lot of the indie game developers that are using Unity that just won't have the bandwidth to add in those options over a, a gameplay feature or a bug fix. And I, I find this very useful in just the fact that I'm going to be recording and posting videos. Wow, that's loud. We're going to close out of that. That was way too loud. I find it useful mostly just to get rid of the, the black bars when I'm recording for YouTube footage. And hopefully no more of my uh, no more of my Unity games, at least, will have black bars when I do any uh, uploads to YouTube. There are some games like The Lab. Um, they are obviously not an indie studio, so they've gone through and they've customized those available options. So if we do the same trick here, what we're going to see is that we can mess with the resolution. So we've got this 1200 by 800 that I mentioned, that weird random, uh, and maybe it's not random, maybe it's something with the Vive. Um, I don't know the specs off the top of my head, but we can set it to 1920 by 1080 for easy recording. Uh, but they only have one graphics quality, and that graphics quality is Vive. Uh, so they've obviously customized this and added in their own settings. So while it's going to work for a lot of the uh, indie games that you're going to want to use this for, um, companies, you know, larger companies that know what they're doing and, you know, have a lot of experience. Not, not that the indie guys, I'm not knocking the indie guys, so don't, don't take it the wrong way. That's not, was not my intention. Um, but Vive, uh, Valve, and Steam, they're much larger than your average indie guy, and they've got the bandwidth and the money to sit on a project uh, a lot longer uh, and fill in these gaps that you know could be better spent on fixing bugs. But anyways, enough backpedaling with that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, 
you, this might not work for every game because they might have customized the graphics. And if they have done that, like the lab, the graphics probably look pretty damn good and you won't need to tweak them aside from maybe changing the resolution, which is still there. Uh, in addition to this, you can you know make it full screen or change which display this pops up on. You can also go in and tweak the inputs if you need to. Um, that goes beyond the scope of this video, but that is pretty much the, uh, the trick in a nutshell. Hopefully this video has been worth your time and you've enjoyed it and got something out of it. Um, if you have, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you know, like I said earlier in the video, of any way to do this for the Unreal Engine games, please go ahead and leave a comment. If there's any other games that you'd like to see me do gameplay footage on, go ahead and leave that down below too. I will, I, I take requests. Um, you know, I've had like two or three so far and knocked all of them out. So hopefully, you know, it gives me some ideas on what to do and what you guys want to see. Uh, if you want to continue to see more from me, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, my goal is 100 subscribers by the end of the month. I'm thinking about maybe doing a giveaway if I reach uh, 100 subscribers, but that is something I'm still debating. Uh, if you guys have any ideas of what you'd like to, to see in a giveaway, I was thinking about maybe, you know, if I reach 100 subscribers giving away a copy of uh, Onward or Vanishing Realms or a, a title of equivalent value. If that's something that's interesting to you guys and you think that that might bring more uh, subscribers into the channel, people that are actually interested uh, in my content, I don't want just people spamming it for, for the giveaway. I want people that are actually interested and going to come back and stay. So that's my hesitation with the, uh, the giveaway. But you know, if you guys think that that's a good idea, please leave, uh, leave some ideas on what you guys might want as a prize if I do decide to do a giveaway. With that being said, please hit that subscribe button to stay tuned in case I do do the giveaway. Uh, I will post a video of that, uh, announcing that and all the terms and conditions and yada 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 legal speak. Um, but until then guys, I will see you in the next video.